So we're going to be doing a one-on-one -on -one together, you and I, and all that's required is for you to follow along and open yourself to this experience, something that I want to give you here. See if you can receive this. All that's required is for you to be sitting comfortably in a chair and just listen to what I ask you to be with. Okay, make sure you're sitting comfortably in a chair and throughout this I want you to keep your eyes open because I want you to realize that this you can do driving a car at work at the office when sitting around a table with your family this is not a particular practice or procedure that you have to do alone by yourself in, in un, under any special circumstances right this is available to you 24 hours a day in fact this is your sole responsibility 24 hours a day but to approach this what we're going to do is do a pincer movement we're going to go from one side and then we're going to go from the other side so that you are able to receive this mentally intellectually but then it's up to you to apply it in your life only by applying it are you going to receive it experientially and what you receive experientially is going to set you free of spiritual books of spiritual teachers of religions it's going to put you into the center of your life and open you up to the nutrition that will enliven your being like nothing else is able to right so let's start bring to mind the most recent time you got upset it doesn't matter how upset you were but just bring to mind the most recent time you were upset and notice there are three things going on simultaneously the physical circumstances in which this upset occurred it may have been someone's behavior or some circumstances right then there's also the story you told yourself the moment you got upset and underlying the story there's also a feeling and this feeling may be fear anger or grief or a mixture of one of those three bring to mind that upset but particularly bring to mind the feeling that came up notice that feeling recall that feeling now remember that moment when you were upset now that you remember that feeling where do you feel that feeling in your body now somewhere in your body you will feel that feeling whether you call it fear anger or grief allow yourself to feel it now as you feel this feeling watch it the same way you would watch a bird in a tree when you're watching a bird in a tree you're not trying to make the bird do anything you're just observing the bird in the tree you're placing no conditions upon the bird you allow the bird to be you simply watch it and why I want you to keep your eyes open while you do this is I want you to notice that you can watch this with your awareness this has nothing to do with your physical eyes watch it with the eyes of your awareness really what you are watching it with is your felt perception so allow yourself to watch that feeling for a while just be with it and allow it to be you are also watching it in the same way that you listen to a song on the radio in fact what you're doing 
is you're listening to that feeling with your attention. When we're listening to a song on the radio, we're not trying to change the song. We're simply receiving that music. We're receiving the feeling of that song. We receive it. We don't alter or try to change it. It's the same with this feeling. Listen to this feeling. Notice as you listen to that feeling or you watch that feeling that the mental body may say, what's the purpose of this? What's supposed to happen? How long will this take? It asks questions. Allow it to ask its questions and do what it wants to do. Our task is just to simply watch that feeling and listen to it without any conditions placed upon it. Watch that feeling and listen to it. All right. Now I want you to bring to mind one of your parents who you have a relationship with that feels less than peace. A parent who you can bring to mind and that parent brings you feelings of either fear, anger or grief. Bring that parent to mind now and listen and watch the feeling that comes up and see where it is in your body and watch it and listen to it. We're not trying to accomplish anything in this task. We're simply noticing the feeling that comes up and where it is in the body and allowing it to be there and allowing ourselves to be with it. Okay, now what I would like you to do is cast your gaze upon your life and look for an event in your life that you regard as being traumatic, an event that you know is unresolved to this day. Take a look at that event and see the physical aspects of it, the story you have told yourself, and that underlying this event there too is a feeling, right? An emotional signature is what we will call it. And that this also brings up a feeling, a physical feeling in your body when you allow that emotional signature to enter your memory. So allow yourself to feel that. That trauma in your life that was unresolved. Allow yourself to feel it. Where is it in your body? Allow yourself to be with it and allow it to be there. Watch it and listen to it without placing any conditions upon it. Okay, that's good enough. Now, what we have done here is we've looked at an upset at maybe a parent and maybe a trauma in our life, three different aspects of our life experience. And we've noticed that these different aspects all have emotional signatures to them. And these emotional signatures can be found through physical sensations that they also bring up in the body when we bring them into our memory. We can think of these as notes in a melody that we do not like to listen to, right? Those emotional signatures, those feelings are notes in a melody and they also correspond to physical places in our body that when we bring those notes up, we feel those physical places in our body come into our awareness. What we may not realize is that tune with those notes is playing all the time, 
24 hours a day and those physical aspects in our body are feeling those kinds of energetic situations or discomforts 24 hours a day. It's just that when we are in the mental aspect of our life, when we are busy with lots of physical activity, we suppress and sedate our awareness of those notes, those particular emotional signatures. And so we don't feel the impact it's having on our body. However, because that's going on in our body all the time, we have behaviors in our life that are based on trying to feel better. These behaviors are what we can call doings. Things we do in our life that come out of an attempt to sedate and control our awareness of this discomfort that's going on in our body all the time. So this is the first pincer movement. We want to address this particular melody. The way we're going to address this particular melody is over the next day or two make a list. Gaze over your life. Look at the people that irritate you the most, the people in your family that you are not at peace with, that cause upsets whenever you're around them, that cause you to feel uncomfortable. Look at the circumstances in your life right now that are causing you anxiety. Look at your past, at unresolved experiences that were traumatic to you that caused you either fear, anger or grief. You're going to make up a list only of 10 different items. You number them 1 to 10. And in front of each number, you write one word. So it may be father, boss, whatever the word is, right? Accident, sickness, whatever that word is. We don't want more than one word because we don't want to engage in the story. All we want to do is write one word that will quickly remind us of the event or the circumstance or the person or the situation that is causing us fear, anger and grief or which we have fear, anger and grief attached to. Once this list is made, the next aspect is consistency. Consistency is very important in this procedure. Every day, for no more than 15 minutes, and we don't want to apply more than 15 minutes a day because then it becomes a big effort and a doing. We want to show effortlessness. And 15 minutes in a day is nothing. 15 minutes out of 24 hours is nothing. For 15 minutes every day, and the most important word here is consistency. We are going to take out our list and we are going to scan over it and what you will notice is one or two of those titles that we've written down will stand out in our attention and this is because the notes related to those or those emotional signatures are closest to the surface. Then what we do is we pick one of them we remind ourselves, you can even tell yourself verbally, oh, this is related to my relationship with my boss at work, whatever. You start to tell the story until you can feel the fear, anger and grief or the emotional resonance. Even if you can't name it, it doesn't matter. You just want to be able to feel the emotional signature related to that and where you feel it in your body. Then what we apply is the listening and the watching. We sit with that emotional signature, we be with it and we allow it to be there. We don't place any conditions on it, we simply allow it to be there. We are being with it without condition. And sometimes the signature will come up and then disappear. If it disappears, then we look at another one on our list and bring up another emotional signature and sit with that one. If the emotional signature can stay with us for 15 minutes, we allow it to be there for 15 minutes. We do this procedure for 15 minutes and it must be done every single day. 
Consistency is really important. Think of it this way. A parent that only goes to a child because the child is upset or is in difficulty. What sort of parent is that? A loving parent is with the child because the child is there. It doesn't need the child to enter a state of discomfort in order for it to be with the child. It is being with the child because it is there. With the same approach, we want to consistently, every day for 15 minutes, approach these emotional signatures on our list and just be with them because they are there. Not being with them to change them, not being with them to understand them, not being with them to move them through our chakras. We're just going to be with them without condition. We're being with them because. Because they are there. This exercise of being without condition is actually what we can also call a not doing. We're bringing up an awareness of the emotional signature and we're not doing anything with it. We're just being without condition. Being without condition has consequence. It is very different from trying to do something, trying to do something to feel better, trying to do something to sedate and control our awareness of our discomfort. Our doings have results and the results are based upon whether we feel better or not or whether we sedate and control our discomfort or not. If we feel better, if we sedate and control our discomfort, then we believe that we're getting good results. But doings may give us release and relief, but they do not bring us to resolution. The task we're setting ourselves now is about resolution. Being without condition is not about results, but it has consequences. The consequences is it brings to us what we require in order to resolve these causal emotional signatures that are ongoing in our body, whether we are aware of them or not. So this is why consistency is very important because we won't initially recognize what we require to resolve these issues. However, being with these issues every day and what we want to do is set ourselves an assignment 40 days. In 40 days and 40 nights we are going to show ourselves something that we will not be able to deny. Like a scientific test we are going to reveal something to ourselves that will be undeniable to the mental body. Remember we are dealing with a mental body that believes it's God. A mental body that believes if it understands and can think its way into something that seems right to do, that if it does that, it can sort things out. But we know, according to these issues we're going to look at, that nothing we've ever done has resolved them. So now we're going to apply being without condition only for 15 minutes, but every single day for 40 days, right? It's going to take us 40 days to find our way out of the wilderness. And this is what's going to unfold. Within a period of time, things are going to start happening around us in our outer world, happening to us, being brought to us, and these will be what we require to resolve these issues. And what we will be unable to deny is that these resolutions have not come through our thinking or our doing. It'll be obvious that these things are coming to us without us thinking or doing anything. And then eventually it'll become undeniable that we are resolving these core issues through being with them without placing condition upon them. Being without condition, feeling these without condition, is the same as what we call unconditional love. When we enter behaviors that are arising out of our fear, anger and grief, behaviors intended to sedate and control our discomfort, behaviors to try and feel better, 
these behaviors are using fear, anger and grief as a means to try and bring resolution. And fear, anger and grief only leads us into fear, anger and grief. However, when we apply being without condition, which is the same as the catchphrase unconditional love, when we apply being without condition to the causal points of these discomforts, and the causal points are the felt aspect, the emotional signature. When we apply being without condition to the causal point of these issues, then they will start to go through an energetic movement because we're allowing them to be. We're taking all restriction off them and they know how to unfold to a point of resolution. Energy knows what to do. If I pour water over your head, I do not need to give that water a GPS system to find its way to the floor. Energy knows how to move to a point of resolution. If a spring comes out the ground, you don't have to give it navigational tools so that it can find the ocean. If it is allowed to run, it will run all the way to the ocean without any instructions from anybody. It's the same with these felt signatures that are within our body. We have become addicted to sedating and controlling them. Now, when we allow them to be there and we be with them without condition, they will come to a point of resolution internally. And this will be mirrored by things happening outside of us that are bringing them to a point of resolution. Things we require will be brought to us. We will receive insights that will assist us. People will phone that we haven't heard from for years or family members will come and speak to us in a way we never expected them to and we will resolve things. But all of this will be a reflection of a resolution that is going on within us because this is what alchemy is about. Alchemy is going and doing within myself what I want to accomplish outside myself. So this is the first task. The consequence is as we see that we are able to bring resolution to our causal issues without entering thinking and doing to accomplish this, then when we have difficulties in our life, we will be less inclined to try and think our way and try and do things to feel better. We will be more inclined to identify the emotional signature, the felt aspect of the experience, and to be with that without condition. In other words, our behavior will shift from doing to try and feel better to being without condition to bring resolution. In other words, this task that we do over 40 days will enliven our state of being. It will show us that being without condition at the causal point of our difficulties, at the felt signature, automatically, organically, gradually enlivens our state of being, right? Now what do we mean by our state of being? This can be best seen in the behavior of a young child. When a young child is playing, it's expressing its being in the world. It's not trying to accomplish something. It's not trying to feel better. It's not trying to get an acknowledgement. It's not trying to manipulate its experiences to accomplish something. It's simply playing being a child. We love to be around a child like that. We want to pick it up and cuddle it. A parent loves to be around such a child and that child Everything that that child requires is always around it and brought to it. It gets its food, it gets love, it gets attention, it gets toys given to it because it's radiating this being without condition and everyone wants to be around that child. However, when that child starts to enter behaviors that are intended to manipulate its experience and those around it, behaviors of trying to get attention, trying to get affection, all those sorts of behaviors. 
we find a child like that annoying and we say, take that child out the room. Take that child away from me. That's what our energy is doing. And in fact, we start to take our attention off that child. And suddenly, that child finds that it's not receiving what it requires. Because no one's attending to it anymore. Because it's annoying, it's irritating. Its very behavior causes us to distance ourselves from it. When we are adults, and we are spending so much of our time doing things to sedate and control our discomfort, to manipulate our experience so that we feel better. We're the same as that child that is pushing away everything it requires. But we don't even realize that this is what's going on. And so the more uncomfortable we become and the more isolated we become and feeling as if we're alone in the universe, the more we enter thinking to try and figure out what to do and then the more we enter doings to try and change our situation. But this doesn't accomplish anything. It never has. What is required is that we shift back to being that child. In other words, the one that is radiating activity as an expression of being in the world, not as a means to manipulate the experience. This exercise that we do for 40 days and 40 nights will gradually shift our behavior from behavior that is doing to try and manipulate what's going on around us to feel better to behavior that is more interested in expressing ourselves and being alive in the world and when we do come across activities or experiences that cause us discomfort we will gradually figure out what is the emotional signature and be with that without condition because this practice will show us that being without condition at the causal point of our uncomfortable experiences is what brings us what we require. And so through this exercise, the doer in us will begin to die and the being will come alive again. This is what's meant by enlivening our being. So this is one aspect of the pincer movement. The other aspect is this. It requires a bit of an approach to it to see what this is about. Let's take an actor for example. Let's say an actor who has an audition right in the evening and that actor wakes up in the morning and feels full of anxiety. Now, if that actor feels anxiety, they're going to get up and they're going to go into the story and they may say, oh, I don't know my lines well enough, I don't know my part well enough. Hang on, maybe I'm just not a good actor, maybe I'm not cut out to be an actor, or maybe this role is not for me, right? And all these stories will eventually cause the actor to go into behaviors of either trying harder all through the day, learning their lines over and over again, and trying whatever they do to feel better about this anxiety they're feeling. By the time they arrive at the audition, they will already be in somewhat of a state. They won't be very present. They will try really hard and be, have some anxiousness during their audition. And what we can be sure about is they will leave that audition feeling that they were not at their best, that they missed the mark. See, this is also similar to an experience that I've had myself in doing the presentations. When I go on the road, I'm on the road for about two weeks, I'm off for two weeks. I'm on the road for two weeks, I'm off for two weeks. When I'm on the road, I'm around people, I'm around a lot of people in airports, I'm doing presentations with groups, I'm doing one-on-ones with people, there's people everywhere. And so I'm very outwardly mobile, right? And then I come back to my apartment and I spend two weeks. And for that time, 90% of the time, I'm alone. I'm by myself. And I enjoy my own company. But I become, you could say, quite inwardly mobile. What happened initially, and I didn't quite understand this when it began to unfold, was that about three days before I was about to go on the road again, I would start to feel quite uncomfortable. A sense of anxiety would arise. And I would start to tell the story too and say, Oh, maybe I'm not ready to do the presentations again. What if I don't know this material well enough? Maybe I should listen to some talks from the past that I've recorded. 
you know, maybe people don't want to hear this, what I'm saying. You know, I would tell all these stories and then by the time I got to the first presentation, it took me a while to get present and grounded enough just to get in there and enjoy what I was, you know, doing. And then one day I realized what was going on. It's the same situation as the actor. Acting is about emotion, right? It really is about the emotional content of the part being played. An actor that cannot contain the emotional part is not a good actor. They tend to do a lot of physical activity and facial expressions and over dramatization of their voice to try and communicate what they should be communicating emotionally. A good example of this is, for example, someone who plays the part of the Mafia boss. If they play that part really well, they can sit behind a desk in a study and just look at you. And they're not moving, they're not giving off facial expressions. But when you look at them, you will have no doubt that if you cross this person in the wrong way, they will take you out. You will know that you won't mess with this person, right? You will have respect for this person because there will be a fierceness about them, not from their movement, not even from their expression, but just from their presence in the room. They will embody that emotional component of power, of control, right? Whatever it is they're supposed to embody. It's the same as the story we're telling about the actor who wakes up in the morning feeling anxiety. If they got up in the morning and connected with that anxiety and said, hang on a moment, this anxiety is valid. This anxiety is actually my daily bread. Being with this anxiety without placing a condition on it, finding out where I'm feeling it in my body and placing my attention on it and allowing that feeling to be there without placing any conditions upon it, just listening to it and watching it as I go through my day and attend to my regular activities. By staying with that all the way to the moment of the audition, what that actor would find is they would arrive at that audition right in their body, centered, grounded, right with a powerful emotional content. Then, as they went through the audition, they would have a powerful emotional content. But not only that, they would find that in the moment of the audition, they would come up with pieces that they would add to their audition that would just arrive in the moment that would be what they would require to really enhance their performance and they would have a great sense of presence there and at the end of the audition regardless of the outcome they would feel that they had given their best right this is the same as when i approach presentations when I get that feeling of anxiety three or four days before I'm about to leave, sometimes two days, I realize that that is my bread. That is the bread being fed to me by the universe to begin enlivening my state so that by the time I arrive at the first presentation, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to have fun. I'm fully in my body and that my presentations have an emotional component to it. Also, because I stay with that emotional signature and I allow it to feed me, I don't try and change it. What happens is I don't need a pen and a paper. I don't need notes in front of me when I give my presentation because I receive what I require in the moment as I go from moment to moment through that presentation. And I will get to the end of that presentation knowing it had been full and I had been on the mark and given my best. What it is I'm trying to communicate to you here is related to this Jesus guy, right? To understand Jesus, one has to first push aside all churchianity, right? So let's for a moment just push aside churchianity because many people are biased about this Jesus guy because of the churchianity. Let's just look at some of the things this person said, right? This person said, look at those lilies, right? And look at those birds, right? They are taken care of. So what the hell is your problem? You're right? You receive everything you require. Then he also said, we cannot live on bread alone, right? So he's saying, well, you know, there is food for the body, but there is another food. 
And then he's also telling us, you know, pray for my daily bread. So what is this guy talking about? And actually, this is amazing what was communicated here. That there is food for the body that we put on our plate, we cook, we prepare and we eat with our mouths. But there is another food. And this food is to enliven, the one food is to enliven our activities in the world. The activities that express our being alive in the world. But there is another food and we can call this soul food. And the soul food is to enliven our state of being. What happens if a mother feeds a child a baby and the baby keeps spitting out the food? If that baby keeps spitting out the food, that baby is going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. It's going to become confused and eventually it will die, right? And there are many of us walking around dead to this world because we just don't have the capacity to enter the moment and enjoy it from an enlivened state of being. And that's because we keep spitting out our nutrition. We are all given our daily bread every day. Every one of us wakes up and during the course of the day we have emotional sensations, let's call them felt signatures, running through our field of awareness. Often we can wake up in the morning and within the first 15 minutes to an hour we have feelings that we may call anxiety or sadness or a feeling of fear or a feeling of grumpiness. We give these feelings names and that's because we're addicted to naming everything we feel. It's just our natural state. But actually, these are our food. You see, we have food coming to us every day from the vibrational. This food is to enliven our state of being. And the only way that we can interact with this food, this food comes to us from the vibration and the vibration is something we feel. This food comes to us to enliven our state of being for the rest of that day and if we have big activities coming on in the next couple of days, it may start being fed to us a few days before those activities. But we're addicted to spitting it out. We don't want to feel anything that's unfamiliar. We've become addicted to just trying to feel good. Now there is a part of us that goes ahead of us. I go ahead of you to prepare a place for you. That's what that part says to us. I go ahead of you to prepare a place for you. And that part of us knows what we're heading into, usually before we do. And what it does is it brings us the food to enliven, it brings us the vibrations to enliven our state of being for that activity. And because those vibrations are coming to us around an activity we know nothing about, an activity we may know about but haven't entered yet and therefore are not familiar with what's going to unfold there, those vibrations are also going to be unfamiliar to us. They're coming from out of the requirements of that activity. So they're coming from something unknown and they will come to us as feelings that are unknown to us. Addictively we call these, you know, sadness or irritability or grumpiness. We may have many names for these feelings, but this is food. Every day we receive our daily bread as we go through the day. Every day we receive this daily bread through felt experiences. And our task is to digest it, right? And the digestion takes place through being with those felt signatures without telling a story, without entering behaviors to try and feel better, but simply to be with those emotional signatures without placing a condition on them, digesting them, digesting them so they will enliven our state of being. So that's the other pincer movement. When we apply these for 40 days and 40 nights, these vibrations coming to us daily that we cannot recognize, that we give names to like, you know, I'm feeling sad or I feel uncomfortable or I feel anxiety. This is the manner. This truly is the manner. Remember when the, all those folks were lost in the desert 
and they received the manna from heaven and it led them out of the wilderness, well, it's time for us to receive the manna that has been given to us every day, to change our manner of being in this world. Because once we do the one pincer movement and we approach those core issues, and through being with them without condition every day, and consistency is the key, being with them every day consistently, that will start to bring resolution to the causal issues in our life that are driving us constantly into mindless states of doing, into all this thinking to try and figure out how to feel better. It will deactivate those behaviors and simultaneously, organically, it will enliven our state of being by showing us that resolution is brought to these core issues, not through our thinking, not through our doing, but through being without condition daily at the causal point of these issues, at the emotional signatures, the uncomfortable emotional signatures where we feel them in our body. So that's the one pincer movement. The other pincer movement is as we go through our day, we pay attention to the emotional signatures that arise that appear as discomfort to us. That is our food. That is our daily bread. This year is the year of receiving. But we cannot receive unless we can identify what it is that is being given to us. We're at a point of transition now. We are being asked to die to this crazy doer and awaken to this beingness, this beingness without condition that knows no order of difficulty and that brings to us by being without condition as we go through our day, as we feel these strange emotional signatures that come to us from the vibration to feed us, as we eat this manna and digest it and the digestion process is simply being with these feelings without placing conditions upon them. We'll notice as you be with these feelings that come up during the day without placing conditions upon them, they will quickly pass out of our awareness. They move on and what happens is they bring to us what we require as we move through the day and suddenly we will have experiences of great synchronicity of being in the flow, of re receiving what we require in ways that are nothing short of miraculous, right? Because our activity in this world is not meant to be trying to feel better, doing God's job. When we don't be without condition at the causal point of our experience, at the heart, if I do not take care of the matters of my heart, which is my S O-U-L responsibility. It's my soul responsibility. If I do not take care of my soul responsibility, which is what's going on in my heart, I end up trying to do God's work, trying to do the things to provide what I think I require, but I actually go towards them as needs and wants. And I don't know what I need and want, let alone what I require. But the universe does. The intelligence of the universe, which we can also call God, knows exactly what we require. When I take care of my heart, everything else is added unto me. And then I enter that same frequency of radiance of the child, right? The radiance of the child that is expressing itself purely as being in this world and enjoying being in this world, not trying to manipulate, not trying to get attention, not trying to force things its way so that it feels better. And that child draws to it the love of the universe and everything it requires and more is brought to it. That's what it means. Unless we become a child again, we do not enter the kingdom. Because while we live as doers, we actually live in the boredom. We just don't realize how much in the boredom we are. It's only when we enliven our state of being that we return to the resonance of the kingdom. And the kingdom is right here, right now. And we have full access to it. And the universe is showering upon us 
the nutrition in every moment so that we can enliven our state of being because when we be without condition which is the frequency of love all is given to us we initiate the frequency of love everything else is added unto us and it will only take you 40 days and 40 nights to apply this because by the time 40 days are up you will have so much evidence that this is so that you will automatically drop your practice of approaching the emotional signatures because you will be going through your entire day paying attention to the emotional signatures anyway and being with them without condition and you won't need a specific practice anymore you won't need to read spiritual books anymore to understand why you hear anymore because being without condition at the causal point of our experience at the emotional signature and digesting this nutrition this nutrition enlivens our being it's also full of insight and revelation and inspiration it truly is manner these emotional signatures that move into our awareness as we move through the day this is the food of the gods that humans have been searching for and have been trying to find this is the manner of the desert all we have to do is receive it and digest it and let it enliven our being and in that way we raise ourselves from the dead so everything that I have told you here has within it the capacity to enliven our state of being and hopefully I've been able to communicate this to you mentally right but it's really up to you to apply this you apply this this is take this step of faith this leap of faith make your list go to it every day feel those emotional signatures then as you go through your day allow yourself to digest the emotional signatures the manner the daily bread that is brought to you and see see what happens and once you get into the flow of it and see the miracle of it you will look around at the world and say how come we didn't know about this all the food we need for our soul is given to us we don't have to find it we don't have to understand it we simply have to allow it in we simply have to receive it and digest it and through that automatically enliven our state of being so that everything we require is brought to us